the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your huskies! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blaze a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to freak violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. (laughs) Young Jim Scott patted the head of his big lead dog, Rex. His father, propped up on a cot in the corner of their cabin, looked fondly at his son and listened as the boy talked to the husky. You're in fine trim for the big race, Rex, old boy. I've never seen you look better. (laughs) Why, we'll come in so far ahead of the rest of those teams, they won't even know they were in a race. Sure hope you're right, son. Nobody needs the money more than we do, that's sure. Don't worry, Pop, we'll get it. And when we do, I'm taking you to Whitehorse. We can catch the first boat that pulls out in the spring. Get a little place in California, the way the doctor says you should. Then you'll be well again. It ain't right that you should take care of me. You're young. Should be having fun instead of a lot of responsibility. Probably be better if an old hulk like me could just die off. Now, don't say things like that, Pop. The thing I want most in the world is for you to get better. And Rex and I are going to see that you do, aren't we, boy? <laughs> sure a lucky day when you got that dog. Remember when Sergeant Preston brought him to me two years ago? He was just a little ball of fur. Mighty frisky one. That pup ate everything from fur caps to bootlace. He still has an appetite like a horse. Well, that's because he's so strong and healthy. Gee, Pop, you sure have been wonderful about my dog team. It costs a lot to keep it. You never mentioned selling it. It's a good thing I didn't. Your team is the favorite to win next Saturday. Purse will be at least $2,000. And if I do win, I can sell the team for twice as much before we leave. Except Rex here. He goes with us to California, don't you, boy? (laughs) You'll get a lot of offers for him, I'll bet. He's one of the best lead dogs in the Yukon. Seems almost a shame to take him away from here, but... Well, he'll like it in the States, I think. That animal would like it any place, as long as you were in it with him. He hears something. Ah, It's a dog team. Quiet, Rex. That sounds like Sergeant Preston. Fine. Come on in. Bring King. One King. I'm sure glad to see you, Sergeant. Well, I had to get here to see you win that race Saturday. Hello, Pete. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm a lot better, Sergeant. Sit down. Jim will fix you some hot tea. Here, sit next to the stove. Give me your park. I'll hang it up. Thanks. Well, Rex looks good. He's in fine shape for the races. You going to be here in town until Saturday? Well, yes, I am, Pete. I think you may need a little law and order around here. People are pouring into town for the dog race, and a lot of money will change hands. There'll be plenty of celebrating. Have you heard anything about the other entries? Well, you're going to have plenty of competition, Jim. There's a team in town from 40 Mile that looks pretty good. Who owns it? A man by the name of Mike Richards. His partner's with him. They call him Red. Mm. Uh, I never heard of Richards. Well, he appears to have a lot of money. He's betting a great deal on his team. Seems to be confident of winning. Well, he hasn't had a look at my team or at Rex. Maybe he wouldn't be so sure. I, uh, I saw his team this afternoon. It's going to be a tough one to beat, Jim. Trouble is, we need the prize money as much as we do. You're never lucky. We don't have to be lucky, Pop. I know that with my team and Rex leading them, we'll come in first. Well, I hope so, for your sake, Pete. At the Northern Hotel, Mike Richards puffed nervously on a big black cigar as he talked to Red Mason. You say this young Jim Scott seems to be the one person who's liable to beat us? Yeah. I walked past his cabin. He was just driving off with his dog team to give him a workout. He sure has a nice team. As good as ours, do you think? No better, except for his lead dog. He's the thing we have to worry about. He's a powerful dog, and according to the local gossip, he's plenty smart. We're putting out a lot of money on this race, Red. Maybe we'd better do something about that lead dog. You mean, uh... We got away with it, didn't we? Yeah. Won't be so easy this time, though. This dog sticks close to his master. We won't be able to get to him. You 
You know where he lives, don't you? Sure. What's wrong with sneaking over there at night and dropping a piece of meat beside the cabin? You can hide a capsule in it. That dog will gulp it down before anyone has a chance to see what it is. We won't give him enough stuff to kill him. Just make him good and sick so he can't go into the race. It might work, but we're taking a chance. Maybe the kid takes him out on leash. Not likely. Anyway, it's the only chance we can take. We'd better do it tonight. The race day is after tomorrow. And that'll make it just about right. Toward noon the following day, Sergeant Preston called at the Scott's cabin. He found Jim bending anxiously over his lead dog, Rex. Well, Jim, what's wrong? Oh, oh, gee, I'm sure glad to see you, Sergeant. Rex is sick. Sick? What's the matter with him? I don't know. I've been so careful of his food, but he acts as if he'd been poisoned by something. Oh? He won't eat anything, just drinks a lot of water. Nose is hot and he can hardly raise his head. Well, let's have a look at him. I think he's poisoned, Sergeant. He sure acts like it. Well, he's in no shape for the race tomorrow. Stomach's swollen, too. It does look like poisoning. But I've been feeding him fresh meat, cut from the same piece we've been eating. If he was poisoned by that, we'd be poisoned, too. Has, uh, has he been out by himself at all? Well, I let him out this morning. He, he was alone for about five minutes till I got my parka on, but he didn't go away from the house. Someone could have thrown a piece of poison mill. But nobody would do a trick like that. I'm not so sure, Pete. A lot of money bet on that race tomorrow. Well, that finishes things for me can't go into that race without Rex. I wouldn't stand a chance. The people who did this will probably win it. That's justice for you. I wonder. wouldn't matter so much if it weren't for Pop, but... Gosh, now we'll never will get to California. Maybe you will, Jim. What do you mean? If you had a good lead, dog, you could win that race tomorrow. Well, that's just a point. I haven't. Would you accept uh, King? King? Sergeant, what do you mean? Well, I think he could bring your team in first, don't you? Why, sure, I know he could. He's even better than Rex. But, Sergeant, I don't own King. The judges all know him. They wouldn't allow it. Well, I can sell him to you, can't I? Sell him? But you wouldn't. Anyway, we wouldn't have enough money to buy him. Oh, I don't mean permanently, Pete. No one has enough money for that. I'll sell him to you for one day, for one dollar. Hey, Sergeant. And I'd sell him right back after the race for the same amount. That's the general idea, Jim. But he belongs to the mounted police, don't he, Sergeant? You haven't the authority to sell him. My team belongs to the mounted police, but not King. He's mine. Oh, gee, that'd be wonderful. The people of Poison Rex would get the surprise of their lives. Yes, it'll be interesting to see who will be surprised. Don't say anything about it to anyone, Jim. Oh, but, Sergeant, I I just thought of something. King won't work for me, will he? You're the only one he'll work for. I... uh... I thought of that, too, Jim. How much weight do you have to carry on the sled in the race? Well, 500 pounds. Are they... No, they don't see what we must carry. Well, if I'm part of your cargo, we'll have no trouble with King. Preston, it's a wonderful idea. You sure are a good friend to help us out like this. Oh, it's no trouble at all, Pete. Glad to do it. Well, I'm going into town now and see what bets are being made. That might be a lead. What do you think about Rex, Sergeant? You think he'd die? I don't think so, Jim. It's not likely they'd give him a deadly poison. It would be too obvious. Just uh, give him lots of water and let him rest. We're sure grateful to you, Preston. I'll be here early in the morning with a bill of sale for you, Jim, uh, in case the judges ask for it. And remember, not a word to anyone. That night in their hotel room, been over a paper, figuring. Red, undressed for bed. You better get some sleep, Mike. Tomorrow's a heavy day. I'd sleep better if I was sure that lead dog got the meat. Funny we didn't hear something about it if he did. He couldn't have missed it if he got out of the cabin by himself. I wish we knew for sure. We got a pile of money on this race. Yeah, forget it. He got it all right. Uh, You got any of that poison left? Yeah, why? (laughs) You hungry? (laughs) It might be smart to take a small piece of meat with us tomorrow and have a capsule in it. Hey, are you crazy? I suppose with everybody watching me, I'd just go up and feed a lead dog a piece of poison meat. You could do what you did in Sitka. Put a piece of white paper around it so it won't show up too much on the snow. And drop it in front of him from under your parka. You got away with it before. That dog will gulp it down, paper and all, before anyone has a chance to see it. We won't need it, I tell you. That dog was sick, we'd have heard about it. All right, all right. I'll take it with me, just in case. Uh, Come on. Get to bed. I'm sleepy. Oh, 
The crowd that had assembled for the start of the dog races was gathering around the judges as one of them talked to Jim Scott. Uh, this bill of sale is authentic, all right. You can't blame us, though, for questioning you, Jim. We all know that lead dog of Preston. Well, then it's all right. I can enter the race. There's nothing to stop you. Carrying a sergeant as part of your weight is unusual, too. But there isn't anything in the rules that says you can. Oh, thanks. Folks, Jim's going to race after all. Hey, that's, that's good. I was afraid he was out. Tough luck, his lead dog get the safe. He's got a good chance now. My money is safe. Yes, sir. Hey, Red. Yeah? Did you get a look at that new lead dog that's heading Jim Scott's team? I got no look. He's better than the other one. We gotta do something. I already did it. You did when? I walked past him when everybody was crowding around the judges and dropped the meat from under my pocket right in front of him. Did he eat it? He must have. I kept right on walking and didn't look back. But it ain't there now. He couldn't have missed it. <laughs> Good. He won't get sick till after we've started. Now go on now. They're getting ready. Good luck. Jim Scott didn't press the team too hard, but saved their strength for the long pull ahead. Red's team was first when they reached the last two miles that led back to the starting point. The crowd watched anxiously as the team appeared over the top of a hill on the home stretch. Here they come! See them? Whose team is at the lead? I don't know. I can't see them. Hey, Mike, could we borrow you up an oculus for a minute? Sure, if you get them right back. That's my team leading. <laughs> you better get ready to pay me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Hey, wait. That other team is gaining. Whoopee! It's Jim. He's catching it. Hey, what are you talking about? Give me those glasses. Jim's dog team was strong and fast, but they had never had race as they raced that day when King set the pace. The huge dog seemed to gain strength from his master's voice. On King! to have you explain this package that was dropped in front of the lead dog of our team before the race. I don't know what you're talking about. I was watching you from the crowd, but you didn't know it. If that dog had been like any other dog, I wouldn't have had it for evidence. But King won't do anything that strangers give him. Hey, Sergeant, are these the men at Poison Drake's? I think so, Tim. We'll see as soon as I examine this piece of meat I'm carrying in my pocket. You can't hold on. Oh, us. yes, I can. The reason I came up here for these races was to keep an eye on you two. This dog poisoning has happened before. In other races, you've been in. Why, you... You ain't got proof. I'm taking you back to headquarters. And I wouldn't try to get away. My dog's had a hard race today, but he can still watch you. Catch your fella. <laughs> These copyrighted drums originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Hugh Holder speaking. <laughs>